एस चांद प्रेजेंस एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एज पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम Hi students, have you ever thought of some interesting events of electrical circuits? Uh, can can you ever have seen this fan being opened or this tube light or bulb or anything which is which is there related to electrical circuits? There are a lot of interesting facts in these electrical equipments. Hi, I am Professor Anjali Garg, your course instructor. Welcome to S Chand Academy. To know more about this topic, you can refer to the book by S Chand Publishing. The link to which is given in the description box below. So let me start with your first topic: basics of electrical circuits. So the, today's lecture is electrical circuits elements, which include R, L, C, then basis of circuits, voltage and current sources. So let me start with first topic. that is resistor so resistor look like r so this resistor is included in ohm's law and we'll discuss about power dissipation so ohm's law is suppose there is a current carrying resistor and the voltage across this resistor is v so as per ohm's law if there is current carrying conductor with current i voltage across resistor is v then v is directly proportional to i or v is equal to ir now what about power dissipation power dissipation in resistor is given by i square r or v into i so this is in watts or kilowatts next element is inductor so inductor looks like this suppose this is current i voltage across inductor is v so the voltage across inductor is given by v which is across the inductor and this current in the inductor is given by suppose i have v is equal to l di by dt that is the voltage across inductor so i can find out from this equation i which is i just shift this l below this v and then integrate i am getting i so i is equal to 1 by l integration of v dt limits from 0 to t plus i not so this i not is my initial current at t is equal to 0 so the current through inductor cannot change instantly and it require infinite voltage to change this current in the inductor that this is most important part of this inductor that it do not change the value of the current in, in, in instantly that is when I, whenever i am going to change this current it takes some time to change and the energy stored in inductor is half of li square where l is inductance value and i is the current flowing through the inductor then is next element is capacitor so the capacitor is represented like this where c is the value of the capacitance vc is the voltage across the capacitor and i is the current flowing through the capacitor so this i is given by c dv by dt and using this equation i can find out v which is 1 by c integration of i dt limit 0 to t plus vc0 where this vc0 is the voltage across capacitor when t is equal to 0 that means as soon as uh, we switch on the supply that is t is equal to 0 the voltage across capacitor is the value vc0 so initially the capacitor is considered as uncharged so initially we say that the value vc0 is zero because there is no charge across the capacitor so the logic is if i connect this capacitor across a battery suppose this is a battery so initially my current is maximum because there is no charge stored in the capacitor now with time this positive will start storing at this plate this negative will charge storing at this place and finally this whole voltage will go across this so 
finally my Vc will become equal to the input voltage V. So initially I assume that my capacitor is uncharged so Vc is equal to 0 at T is equal to 0. So this charge stored in the capacitor is I dt from limit 0 to T and from this relation I can find out C that is charge of the capacitor is equal to Q over V. So the value of the voltage or charge of a capacitor again cannot be charged, change instantaneously and it require infinite current to change this value. So this is again a very important concept that I cannot charge this capacitor in an instant as soon as I switch on my supply and it takes infinite current to charge my capacitor to fully the value of the voltage which is given as input. So the important part is the capacitor take time to fully charge based on my input given to the capacitor and it take time that is called as uh, when the capacitor is fully charged and this charge is actually the input voltage which appears across the capacitor and next is energy stored in capacitor which is given by half of this energy stored is given as half of Cv square where V is the voltage across capacitor. So next is voltage source and current source. So let me start with voltage source. So this voltage source is represented by like this where V is the voltage of this source across my terminal A and B. So if I write A and B and I take this as plus, this as minus, this voltage is the voltage across terminal A and B for the given source V in volts. Okay, so this voltage source can also be represented like this. This is also one of the symbol of representing a voltage source. I can also connect a resistance across this. Even then my voltage will remain same between A and B. This as plus, this as minus if this is V. Now ideal voltage source, ideal voltage source is the voltage source which have zero internal resistance. Zero internal resistance means that this voltage source will provide internal resistance zero. That means if I assume this voltage source is not there in the circuit, it will act like a short circuit. Then is next is current source. So the current source is represented by a circle with an arrow within the circle across the terminal A and B and the value is written outside value of this current source is written outside and the arrow gives me the direction of the flow of current in this terminal. So if I connect a resistance between this terminal then only this current will flow between A and B which is equal to the value of the current source. If I connect a resistance in series across in series across this current source I will get same value of current because in series current remain same. In parallel voltage remain same so voltage remain same across the resistance because they are in parallel in series current remain same so my same current will flow in series across terminal A and B. And what about ideal current source? Ideal current source is a current source which have infinite, infinite internal resistance. Now what is the meaning of infinite internal resistance? That means this current will not flow if I assume there is no current source in the circuit. So infinite resistance means there, the, 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 there is no provision of flow of current between the terminals where this current source is actually present if I assume this current source is not there in the circuit. So this is all about voltage source and current source. We can see again, we can summarize that for, for voltage sources, voltage remain same in parallel. For current sources, 
current remains same in series and for idle voltage source the resistance internal resistance is zero for idle current source internal resistance is infinite okay let me start with resistances in series and parallel so let me start with resistance in series now suppose there are two resistance resistance 1 r1 resistance 2 r2 now they are in series so what is total equal resistance of these two resistance in series is r1 plus r2 so if this resistance is in ohms so i am getting this is total resistance in ohms now suppose this this resistance r1 and r2 is actually conductance so g is conductance which is which is mentioned by ohms inverse or mahos or simons so if there are two conductances in series now so what is total conductance now it will be 1 by g is equal to 1 by g1 plus 1 by g2 and the units are ohms inverse so these both are resistance but the units are in red it is in ohms in blue it is in conductance so i am getting resistance in ohms or resistance in mahos because blue one is in conductance form so if i have resistance n number of resistance in series i am getting total sum in terms of ohms and their reciprocal in terms of mahos then is resistance in parallel Now I have two resistance in parallel R1 and R2. So what is total resistance? 1 by R total is 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 or I can write R total is R1 R2 divided by R1 plus R2 and just to remind you these two resistances are in ohms so my this total resistance is in ohms now suppose i take this resistance in terms of conductance maho inverse this resistance in terms of conductance in mahos so what will be my total g total g now will be g1 plus g2 and my units are ohms inverse or mahos or simons so if the resistances are in parallel and the units are ohm that means they are resistances i am getting r total is equal to r1 r2 divided by r1 plus r2 but if these two resistances are in the form of conductance so i am simply adding these resistance in terms of conductance to get total conductance in mahos let me take an example these are practice question i am just discussing only this question so i'll redraw this question to be more clear this will give you practice about series parallel resistance so i have 4 ohm then 5 1 ohm 2 ohm now these two resistance 6 ohm and 3 ohm are in parallel you can see that these two are in parallel and i need to find out total resistance between my terminal a and b so first of all we see that these two are in parallel so as discussed right now 6 and 3 in parallel so what is the equivalent resistance of these two 6 into 3 divided by 6 plus 3 will give me 2 ohm so if I redraw this circuit, I'll get 4, then 
वन फाइव टू दिस इज ओरिजिनल सर्किट नाउ सिक्स एंड थ्री इन पैरल आई एम गेटिंग टू सो आई राइट इन प्लेस ऑफ सिक्स एंड टू इन थ्री इन पैरल आई राइट टू देन आई हैव दिस हैज एट ओम रजिस्टर्स सो वी कैन सी दैट नाउ द सर्किट लुक क्वाइट सिंप्लीफाइड फॉर्म अगेन आई सी टू एंड टू आर इन सीरीज एंड वन एंड फाइव इन सीरीज सो इफ आई अगेन रीड रॉ आई एम गेटिंग नाउ फोर टू एंड टू सीरीज एट मेक्स फोर देन एट एंड फाइव एंड वन इन सीरीज आई एम गेटिंग सिक्स अगेन आई एल रीड रॉ बिकॉज नाउ फोर एंड सिक्स आर इन पैरल सो इफ आई रीड रॉ एट आई एम नाउ गेटिंग फोर वॉट इज वैल्यू ऑफ दिस फोर इन टू सिक्स बाय फोर प्लस सिक्स इज टेन सो आई एम गेटिंग दिस एज टू पॉइंट फोर ओम्स सो आई नाउ विल राइट इन प्लेस ऑफ फोर एंड सिक्स इन पैरल टू पॉइंट फोर एंड नाउ दिस एज एट it look more simplified form as compared to the initial question now simply all three are in series so i'm now we'll get a r a b is equal to 4 plus 2.4 plus 8 so that will make 14.4 ohms so this is my final answer for the given problem statement so this is how we can solve using series parallel resistance we can solve what is the total resistance of the given circuit now you can practice this and this question just to give you a hint for this question this uh, these all resistances are in siemens siemens means we already discussed this is conductance so in in parallel we add these two we'll add these two because in parallel conductance is added so we'll add this to then this will be in series we multiply and divide and so on so using the concept of conductance we can find out what is the total conductance about ab terminal so these two questions are for practice question so this is the end of part 1 and in this part 1 we discuss about basics of electrical circuits which includes r l c then we discuss about resistance in series and parallel we practice some questions on uh, series and parallel including resistance and conductance we also discuss about current and voltage sources in part 2 we will proceed with voltage division rule current division rule and the questions based on these two to you know more about this topic you can refer to the book by s chan publishing the link to which is given in the description box below If you found this video interesting then please like share and subscribe this channel and press the bell button for future updates thank you All rights reserved this video has been prepared for educational purposes only no part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder